What's going on, FG fam? Welcome to another episode of the Houston Rockets franchise, my NBA, here on NBA 2K22. It's been a really rough season for the Houston Rockets, but I think we may be making some deals before the deadline. Not that particular one, because that was bad. We are not trading Christian Wood away for next to nothing. If we are going to trade him away, we're going to get something back for him. Here's another trade that I don't necessarily see anything good happening in, but Drogic does get hurt after that offer, so maybe it would have worked. Don't really know. But unless it's really giving us draft picks, it's not something I really want to do. But here's one that will give us some draft picks and a really young player who maybe we can develop in Taylor Horton at Tucker. I mean, the Lakers don't really want him anymore. We're giving up a couple of older players, bringing in a younger player from the Lakers and a second round draft pick. So I'm okay with making that deal as a, I guess, naturally tanking team. But then there goes Taylor Horton Tucker out with injury as soon as we get him. So that kind of sucks. And as you can see, we're losing a lot of games. We did get a two game winning streak there though with wins over the Spurs and the Pelicans. We go into the All-Star break and we're gonna take a look at how the All-Star game goes, but we're gonna sim through all of that. Taylor Horton Tucker coming back from injury now and into the All-Star break we go. And super simming that all-star game. The Eastern Conference just absolutely destroying our Western Conference. There's no Rockets in this game, so nothing really important. Kyrie Irving, Carl Anthony Towns leading the way there. And on the other side, it was Jokic with 28 points. No doubt the MVP of the All-Star game. Absolutely big-time performance from him. We get a win against the Magic on the other side of the All-Star break, and now we're taking on the LA Clippers at home. We're 12 and 47. They're 34 and 28. So a way better team coming in here. Reggie Jackson, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Definitely, guys, we're going to have to watch out for. And Marcus Morris Sr. has actually been hot here in this portion of the season. Here's Kawhi asserting his dominance inside over Drogic with an easy two bucket. Then Kawhi from outside. He scores the first five points of the ball game and the Clippers are up five nil. Now five to two, here comes Drogic. He gets it out to Jalen Green for three. Hey, it's a tie ball game and Houston starting off not too terribly. Here's Martin Jr. from the outside for three. And then Jalen Green hitting a three as well. We are up four points, very nice. Kawhi Leonard though inside has been tough and he gets another bucket there. And then here with the slamma jamma, 5.55 to go in the first quarter. We got a tie game at 13. Here's Drogic. Will he pop one? No, he'll get it to Jalen Green, and he'll pop a three. It goes down for a 16-13 lead. Later on at 16-15, here's the pass outside. Jalen Green hits that one for a long two. 18-17 the score. Bledsoe from the outside to give the Clippers a lead at 20 to 18. Later on, 22, 18, here's the drive inside and it's miss and Goon gets it, gets it out to Garuba for three. Love to see that, some passing around the horn. Here's an inside take and a brilliant take there for Porter. Here's Horton Tucker, he'll pass it out to Porter. Porter looking to try to drive in, but he'll get it out to Garuba. They leave him wide open for deep three ball and he will take it. So a four point game here coming down to the end of the first. There's a missed shot and that will end the first quarter. 34-30 lead for the Clippers. We go into the second quarter. Here's Kawhi Leonard from outside. He will hit the three ball, give the Clippers a seven point lead. And then the drive inside, look at this, nobody's stopping him, but he'll pass it out to PG-13 for the easy three ball. Now driving inside, very nice drive, but couldn't get it to go. Wood gets the rebound, gets it out to Jalen Green for three. And the Rockets just trying to hang in there, 11 points down, there's the pass out to Kenyon Martin Jr. for three. It's an 11-point ball game. Here's Ty Jerome over to Kenyon Martin Jr., and he gets another open look from three. Eight points down. Later on, it's a 12-point ball game. 5:01 to go in the half. Ty Jerome just inside the arc will hit the two ball. 
10 point game at that point, but now it's getting closer to a 20 point game. Oddly enough, still not done with the first half. Here, moving around a little bit around behind the perimeter. Here's Porter Jr. for the three ball. Wow, found his open look and took it. So good to see. Here's Mann in the corner for three. You can't just leave anybody wide open, let alone him. Here's the pass over to the three ball for Drogic as he looks to contribute a little bit. Here he is on the dribble drive. He'll get it out to Horton Tucker who is contributing here in his first actual viewed game here as a Rocket. Horton Tucker again looking for three. And I like what we're seeing from the nice young player. Let me know what you thought of that trade in the comments section below as we go into halftime. 67-55, a 12-point game here against the Clippers, who is no doubt headed for the playoffs. We are obviously not. 71-57 is the score here in the third, and Jackson from the outside. I haven't seen much of Reggie Jackson, but there we see a little bit of what he can do. Here is the outside shot for Kenyon Martin Jr. to match. Still a 12-point ball game, still a chance here. Kawhi Leonard, though, with the long two, nearly a three. Here's Martin Jr. He'll get it over to Drogic, and good to see Drogic still contributing here late in game. 82-68, though, midway through the third. Nice three ball for Jalen Green, but it just doesn't seem like the Rockets have what it takes to overcome this deficit right now. Ty Jerome, though, from the outside, makes it a 10-point ball game. And this is the best chance the Rockets are going to have. They need to continue the run that they've been on, but PG-13 looking to shut that down with a three ball right there. So we go into a little bit of SimCast here. We'll see if it ever gets close again. Was like a four point game for a brief moment, but the Clippers will pull away again and secure a 14 point victory. Not as bad as it could have been. Jalen Green with 24 points, Porter Jr. with 23, and Kenyon Martin Jr. with 20. So you love to see the big three young guys that we are trying to build around getting the job done. PG-13 had 36, Kawhi had 31 in the ball game, and they had four other players, maybe even five, I don't know with double digit points. So we continue losing some games. We actually beat the Heat by a point. I don't know how that happens. We are not as good as the Heat. But continuing to lose a bunch of ball games. Drew Eubanks is back and we've got a game against the Dallas Mavericks here. I know a lot of people wanted to see us play the Mavericks. So, I mean, we'll simcast until we get to a point where maybe we wanna jump in and take a look and see if we can pull off a victory. I really am trying to get through the end of the season here today in this episode because a lot of you, I know, this is terrible to watch, but this is the type of team we're dealing with. That's why it's a rebuild franchise series. So, Mavericks with a big lead here, 11-point lead. Then it gets into single digits, and that's where we'll at least try to make a comeback inside of three minutes. We'll see if we can get the job done, but... It's going to be tough with Luka Doncic playing like that. That's a nice inside take. Here's Martin Jr. from the outside. That's the only way we're going to make a comeback, make it a 10-point game. Here's Doncic again, though, and what a shot. Absolute stop and pop, just absolutely stuttered his man. Here inside, the pass back outside. Martin Jr. for another three ball. Love to see it. But look at this drive inside. The pass over to Kristaps Porzingis, who's loving what he's seeing from the passer. Now here, getting over to Kenyon Martin Jr. Martin Jr. looking for another three ball, and this one goes down again. He has been playing really well. Here's Tate from the outside, and Jason Chate could not get it to go. Rebound Mavericks, they get the 13-point win. Luka Doncic just too much for us today. You can take a look at what he was able to do in the box score. 43, 10, and 10. No doubt an MVP candidate this year, regardless of the team's record. And Kevin Porter Jr. was our leading scorer with 23 points. Christian Wood had 28 and 2. Kenny Martin Jr. with 17 points on the day. Horton Tucker with four points in 30 minutes. Not exactly what we want to see from the guy that we just traded for, but look at all these L's in the month of March. Let's see what happens against the Nets. That's another team you guys wanted to kind of see us play against. We definitely are not in the caliber of the Brooklyn Nets, but hey, early in the first half, we caught them sleeping a little bit, but here they are making a comeback in the second half. 
We'll see if there's a point here we might want to stop and jump in on. Look at this, a three-point game under three minutes to play. Now just a two-point game. We will check that out as Kevin Durant, the Durantula, gets in and makes it a four-point game. Here's Porter Jr. on the drive and the and one, making it a one-point game. Blake Griffin not liking that he was called for that one. Here's the pass over to Christian Wood. He gets it to Horton Tucker for a three. Rockets got a two-point lead. Kevin Durant, though, with the stop and pop from mid-range, gets it. 101 all. Here comes Ty Jerome. Jerome looking for the bucket, and he gets it to go. Tied at 103 now. Here's Harden. Harden on the drive. The stop and go. He gets it to go. Rockets take a timeout. They're not able to hit. Nets are hitting their free throws, and there's the final attempt that is missed. So Nets hit their free throws again. Here's a heave from Jerome. No good. Nets will win by six. Hitting a bunch of free throws at the end. This game was a lot closer than what that score will suggest, but it is what it is. Kyrie Irving, 20 points. Harden, 20 points as well. Durant with 18 and Griffin with 16. Nobody with a double-double on the Nets, though. I think that's what gave us a chance. Kevin Durant, though, eight boards, seven blocks. What in the world? I mean, I know he's a tall man, but jeez. Patty Mills added 11 for the Nets team. Millsap, 10 and 8. That's good production for the old, old man. Horton Tucker led us with 22 points. I love seeing that. Martin Jr. had 10 points, 8 boards. You love seeing that as well. As we end this season off, an MVP is Joel Embiid with 28 points, 14 boards. Cade Cunningham was the rookie of the year. Six man goes to Andre Drummond, averaging a double-double. Giannis gets an award there and then most improved there's your chauncey billups to be coach of the year jonathan ship to be executive of the year so we move on to the all nba teams luca james harden Giannis, lebron and joel Embiid for all first team russell westbrook stephen curry anthony davis jimmy butler and Jokic for second team third team was beal lamello ball julius randall jason tatum and bam out of bio all defensive first team, PG, Holiday, Giannis. You got second team is Lonzo, Chris Paul, Jonathan Isaac. Good little addition to see there. All rookie first team. Surprised not to see Jalen Green. He's on the all rookie second team, though. He did get hurt at the end of the year, so that would probably be a reason why maybe he did not make it. So we'll see. And then we have our ending stats on the season. Christian Wood led us in points. Jalen Green was second. Porter Jr. was third. And I'm surprised to see Kenyon Martin at only 8.8 .8 points a game. I mean, he had a lot of games where he scored double digits, especially in our played games. Luka Doncic led the league with 30 points per game. He did not win MVP. I guess the team just wasn't good enough. He did average a double-double. I mean... Embiid had the most boards, but look at those assists for Doncic. That is just wild. 30 points, 10 and a half assists is just uh, a monstrous season. Absolutely crazy. So we look at the standings, and the Trailblazers are the number one seed in the Western Conference. Dallas did win enough games. They were third in the Western Conference. I'm surprised that Luka didn't get more of a look there. But, yeah, the Sixers are number one in the East. We are the absolute last place team in the entire NBA. So let's take a look at how this playoff series go. Portland does get a win in five games. Clippers take seven to get past the Lakers. But, hey, Clippers beating the Lakers, that's something you don't see much. Utah gets past Dallas in seven. Phoenix gets a sweep over number two, New Orleans. Seven games between the Sixers and the Hawks. Six games for the Celtics to win. The Knicks lose in seven games, and Brooklyn sweeps Washington. Moving on, Brooklyn gets a six-game win. Boston upsets Philly in seven games. Clippers in five to upset Portland, and a seven-game series between Utah and Phoenix. Clippers sweep Phoenix. Brooklyn sweeps Boston, so it's the Clippers and the Nets, two teams that we faced in this episode. <laughs> so weird. And the Nets get the win in seven six games so the Brooklyn Nets do exactly what they wanted to do when they brought in Kevin Durant and he wins finals MVP 32.8 points a game good on the snake good on the Durantula as we take a look at how each game kind of went 
And you see, game number one was a win for the Nets. Game number two was a blowout win for the Clippers. Kawhi led the way there. Game number three was a blowout win for the Clippers. PG-13 led the way in that one. Game number four, a very close win for the Nets. Game number five, a blowout win for the Nets. That was the only blowout win for the Nets to that point. The other ones were very, very close victories. The Clippers were the ones blowing them out, and then the Nets get a 10-point win in game number six with a 41 14 point performance from Kevin Durant. So there you have it. It is a six game championship for the Nets. They're the champions, and we are going into the offseason. Who should we target? Do you know what we should be looking for? I know the team is really young. We should probably be looking veteran. I hope you're excited to see where your players get drafted. So make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for the love of franchise content in all sports. That's what we do here. Check out the link in the description below for my Discord and my Twitch. Come hang out with us outside of just YouTube. It's a great community we're building. I know you will love it. And if you want to see more franchise, just click right here and watch some more franchise.